Good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday night. Time for a new episode of the Ben Herrera Show. And, uh, well, we're having fun here already because Marcos, or Malik is laughing. <laughs> what were you laughing at? Mike. Oh. Mike makes me laugh. <laughs> All right, so we got a special guest on tonight. And before we get to that, we are going to talk about our sponsors. So let's do that as, uh, first. So we have Pure West Compassion Club is one of our sponsors, uh, located at 9430 Adams Street, right next to Love's Gas Station. You can get a hold of them at 616-772-9420 uh, for any of your needs. They are open daily 10 to 6, and on the weekends, I think they're 9 to 6. I'd have to double check that. But. And also we have Zamudio Ramos Cleaning Service. They are owned by... Angela Zamudio, if you need any cleaning, factory, office, uh, shoes, uh, pretty much anything like that, get a hold of her, 616-321-0309, or you can get a hold of her on Facebook Messenger. All right, so tonight, we got Malik, what's up, Malik's, Mal Malik's, with his new leaks, wait, I mean locks, wait, what were we called? Locks, right? Well, I got it. Your hair. What about it? Didn't you just get it done? Oh. You <laughs> said new locks. Yeah, I just put these on last night. The glue is still wet. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Shout out to Kiki Washington, man. Listen. Kiki is dope on the locks, too, man. Locks, braids. Y'all need any of that, man. Reach out to Kiki Washington, man. If y'all need her information, let us know. Um, she'll get you together, man. So... Yeah, she's Shout out to Kiki, man. I got a lot of compliments, man. It's a fresh lineup, you know, feeling good. Looking good as usual, and, you know, life goes on. But, yeah, um, yeah, feels good to be back, man. I was out of the building for a few days, had to take care of some affairs out of town, and um, um, Silence of Violence Walk, that was awesome. Good turnout. Marching band. Mayor, Sorry. police chief, you know, um, just just trying to trying to heal the rules, man, and uh, preventing the maintenance for and protection for our kids, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, no doubt, man. It's good to be back, man. Sweet. And um, All right. oh, good friend in the building. Yep, we got our special guest today. Oops, I was at the wrong place. Where'd she go? 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 Oh, there she is. We got Shada Martin in the house. Thank you for joining us. What's up, baby? Thank you. Appreciate you coming through. Um, well, let's just uh, let's start it. Uh, Wait, yeah. you forgot someone? No, no. He's fine. Well, <laughs> dude, we already talked about that. Anyway, uh, so we have a new book called Exposed. God's Love Revealed by Shauna Martin. And we're going to go ahead and, and toss it over to her if you want to explain the reason behind the book. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I just thank you guys for getting me oh, on that, here. Yep. Uh, Appreciate Malik, it. a good yes. friend, several years. Yeah, nice yeah. to meet you guys. Nice to meet you as well. Um, I just appreciate you guys helping me get this story out because I'm hoping to impact and help a lot of people. Of course. Um, which would be behind the book. But I didn't know that that was what was going on mm -hmm. um so the book came about it was kind of crazy um it's almost 13 it was about 13 years ago okay. um i had a history of a lot of abuse trauma mental health issues anxiety depression a lot of suicidal thoughts maybe mm -hmm. even bipolar because, um, you know, I'm a woman. We all look cray cray, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I got a lot of emotions going on. Yeah, right. So, so yeah. So, I was, um, you know, had, that was the first, you know, few decades of my life with a, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And so, in 2010, 2011, I fell into actually a year-long depression. Like, I always kind of bounced from high to low. I kind of, you know, was always either up or down mm -hmm. but that year was just down it was just a very dark black place like I remember the day and the moment still that the cloud like just came over me mm -hmm. and I remember that 
and I got stuck in there. And um, so I was just trying to get out of it. I was reading everything I could read about depression or what was going on with me. Like, how do I get out? Like, I was scary. Yeah. Um, I was I was really scared with the thoughts I was having, and um, it was just it was just so so dark. It was so gloomy. There was no hope. Right. There was no hope there. And so about in the middle of that year long, I met with one of my aunts for coffee. I don't drink coffee, but we met at Mm -hmm. a little coffee shop and um, we were just chit chatting. And she was my aunt who led me to Christ when I was seven years old. So I grew up in the faith. I was, you know, as a little girl, I grew up here in the churches, born and raised here in Holland. So Mm -hmm. know the churches, know a lot of people. And so anyways... Um, and I was in my early thirties, this is 2011. So, um, in the middle of a conversation, we're just chit chatting and talking and, and Mm -hmm. she just stops in the middle of this conversation Mm. and she just blurts out, I see you writing a book and I'm instantly like, I'm not right. Like, I'm not going to write a book. So where'd you get that from? I I have, I've never thought of writing a book and I'm like, what am I going to write about that anybody's going to read about? And everything's been written about. Like that was instant reviews. Mm -hmm. I'm not writing. I had no, no desire to write a book and no idea what I would write a book about. I got nothing, but uh, God had a different plan. So two weeks later, about two weeks later, I was turning the bed down to go to bed. I was just, as soon as I pulled the blankets down, um, this book title just dropped, just dropped in my head. Exposed God's Love Revealed. Just out of the blue. And I didn't think mm. anything much of it. Just like, I don't know, that's kind of cool, whatever. I don't know what that was. But yeah. I went to bed. And the next morning, as soon as I woke up, as soon as I opened my eyes, the chapter title started downloading instantly. I had to j- jump up and get a pen and paper. I was writing them as fast as they were coming. Hmm. Um, and they came all in chronological order. Just completely down. 19 chapters. Wow. Bam, 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 bam. I was writing. And it was like God was like, the Holy Spirit was on me. Um, because I was writing like for four days. Yeah. I was just like filled with this supernatural power or something because I just started writing in these chapters. I was writing scriptures I didn't even realize I knew. But again, you know, I'd been digging my way up, so a lot was going in, right. you know, mm-hmm. at that time. And so for four days I wrote and was kind of filling in some of the chapters. And then kind of as quickly as this started, it ended. Like all of a sudden God was gone and I was like I couldn't come up with any more material on my own. I had no self-effort to, there was nothing, I blank, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I went from like all this, you know, I was like, I had this hope, I had a purpose. Mm-hmm. It gave me a glimmer of, of something, you know, a, mm-hmm. a light at the end of this tunnel. Like, okay, no, no, there is a reason for me to be on this earth, you know? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. this dark, dark place I'm thinking I'm never gonna get out of. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, what the heck just happened? Did I have like some like manic bipolar episode? Am I crazier than I thought? You know, <laughs> so it was, it was, you know, but I'm like, but I have like real evidence here. I have a book title. I have 19 chapter titles yeah. and I'm like, what in the world? So I kind of just, I glanced at the chapter titles and I looked at them and I realized that I hadn't lived a handful of those chapters yet. Mm. It was another prophecy. It was another premonition because like, I was like, well, I can't write these because I haven't lived them yet. So what ended up happening, I don't know this stuff back then. Right. You know, I just know I have this started. And hmm. it took seven years for my life to unfold into every single one of those chapters. And I always had the book hmm. in the back of my mind. So when my seasons of my life changed, I was like, oh, that's going to be that chapter. Oh, that, that's that chapter. All I had was a chapter title. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what the details were going to be yeah. walking forward. Mm-hmm. You know, I could see looking back. And when I looked at those chapter titles back then, I was like, oh, how is God going to get me through that chapter or that chapter? They looked pretty hard just by the title. And then there were chapters that I was like, um, I thought were going to end completely different than what they did. Um, but 2018, uh, I ended up, I knew it was time to write the book. I knew it was time to kind of pursue my dreams. I was burnt out at work, another office job. I was on my own and, um, I just knew I had something bigger to do. 
and I knew it was time. Mm -hmm. So I uh, quit my job. I kind of planned it out for a couple months. I don't just, you know, <laughs> not so impulsive. I, I'm planned impulsive. <laughs> I, I'm a planner, impul impulsively planner. Yeah. Um, but so 2018, I, I lined it up. So I quit my job. I sold everything I owned, got rid of mm. my apartment, bought a minivan, and lived out of it for nine months and wrote the book. And that was actually a chapter title. You want to say that again? You lived in a van. I lived out of my van. Wow. I lived out of my van for nine months. And that's when I met Malik, 2018. Mm -hmm. We worked together at Escape with mm. the summer program with okay. the youth there. And that was actually a chapter title. It's called uh, Get Rid of Everything and Get a Life. Mm. And that was that chapter last two. That was that last fulfillment. Mm. Yeah. So that that chapter explains everything. It's amazing. Even that chapter is amazing how God fulfilled dreams in that. So yeah, because I was like, hey, what? Yeah. What happened to Alexis? <laughs> yeah, right. I had Alexis. Yeah, Alexis tried to like. Yeah, hey, I, can, I can make a bed in the back of that Alexis. Yeah. <laughs> or fit oh, my kayak. Yeah, Alexis. <laughs> She's like, I got rid of I was like, you got rid of the Lex. That mug was clean, too. It was clean. Real clean vehicle. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was clean, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. I mean, it was... And, and that year alone was amazing because uh, I, I wasn't even thinking about chap chapter on that chapter because there's a lot of big stuff in here, but but chasing your dreams. Like, you know, God gives us dreams and desires. Like, we're all here for a reason. Oh, yeah. We all have a oh, purpose. Yeah. We aren't mm -hmm. just here by accident, you know? Mm. And you guys are doing your thing. It's funny that you say that real quick, but no, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> I know this is kind of weird to say, but I, I saw this article that was talking about similar to that. Staying here, we're, we're not here by accident. Think about all of them. You're going to laugh. All of the sperm that made it that far. And this was the article, I'm not joking. And it said, you made it that far. Yeah. And you're alive, so do something with it. Take, don't take advantage of it. Yeah. Now, that's the reason why I brought that up. That was, I didn't say it. It was just an article that I yeah. read. And I looked at it and it made, it made me realize, wow, that is very, very true. Like, none of us could be here right now if it wasn't for that moment. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing to look at. So. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think how things line up. I know it's a weird way to look at it, but... <laughs> I, I had a joke about that yesterday, so I... I, okay. <laughs> I was like, you really, you was the fastest one? <laughs> and you still made it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know some people out there that I, I've encountered or still encounter, it's just like, man, bro. You made what a, a purpose. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even a waste of space got purpose, bro. Right. Like, but... Who am I? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, and I, at that point, I feel like I'm, I'm judging people. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, yeah, you know, some some different human beings out here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. at the end of the day, all we are is the shit we've been through. You know, yeah. excuse me, the stuff we've been through. Excuse my language. Been through some stuff. Everybody's been through some stuff. If you you if you're at least 13, you've probably been through some stuff already. Oh, yeah. So I know that. I see, some, I see some of your titles are yeah. are very interesting, and then so what that sticks out for me is there's a fungus among us. Yes. Yeah, I saw that one. Too. There's a fungus <laughs> among us. So, um, so that one uh, is all about it's actually physical health, and you wouldn't think of it. I have been working with nutritionists and health coaches for over a decade. I mean, I grew up. I grew up on government cheese, y'all, and mm. hot dog macaroni. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. um, the good old days. The good of. old days. Yeah. That was the yeah. 80s, mm. 90s, you know, Sam's Club. My, yep. you know, stepdad brought in all the good stuff. I still remember when Walmart opened. Yeah. Do you remember that? Lived off Pop, Pop Tarts. Oh, yeah, Walmart. I remember when Meyer was Thrifty Acre yeah. on the north oh, side. Yeah. We were just talking about that. <laughs> just talking about that earlier. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And so, Fungus Among Us is all about physical health. There's a lot of good detail in there. It's about your gut health. So mm. basically, if I mm. sum up the book, uh, and this being my healing journey from uh, trauma, from abuse, mental health, like I had everything against me if you look at my personality type, my genetics, mm -hmm. my background, my childhood, my family. Like I, I was, you know, I, I had all the odds stacked against me to have a lot of struggles. And so, 
you know, we, we got to know that we are like, a, we are three part being. So we are physical, we are mental, emotional, soul, and we have a spirit. So, or we are a spirit, however, you, you know, I'm going to get all technical. Um, so for God to heal me, you know, we tackled every area. He tackled every area with me. So one had to be your gut is directly linked to your brain. Your gut health is so directly linked to your brain. So once I could get that also taken care of, that helped overcome anxiety, depression. Like you, you, you know, we just, there, there's so many factors when it comes to depression, Mm -hmm. there's over a hundred causes of depression mm -hmm. wow. and there's that many wow. answers or remedies for it. So what happened That's is when, when, okay, the thing is the depression uh, probably started in my early teens and the suicidal thought, probably a good couple decades. Mm. And then the anxiety came a little bit later, uh, my late twenties and mm. I had anxiety for 15 years. Um, it was debilitating. It got to the point where I couldn't even leave, leave my home. I was agoraphobic. Mm -hmm. Basically, I was, I mean, I had panic attacks everywhere for every mm -hmm. reason. And so, I, I mean, I had a lot to tackle. Um, but cleaning up, like I said, like my gut health was one, one thing. Um, growing in my faith. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know how people do this without God because at least I have something to cling to. I have, mm -hmm. you know. So that's what I was going to say is basically... When you're growing and healing in all these areas, when you're recovering from abuse and trauma and mental health issues, addiction, yes. um, you're, what you're doing is you're just filling your tool belt with a lot of tools. So now when stuff, because life still happens, mm -hmm. it's still coming at me, you know, mm -hmm. and, yep. and, and I'm in my mid forties. And so, you know, and I can tell you the last three years of my life have been the most traumatic and I've been in trauma since birth. Mm. So it doesn't go away. Yet, I didn't struggle with depression or anxiety mm. going okay. through. That's like yeah. a testimony. I'm like, I didn't even think of that, but that's like a testimony itself that you can walk through this life and still have hope, no matter what you're going through. Mm -hmm. When you get that tool belt filled with tools, and that's my faith. That's my sense of humor. That's you know, getting rid of toxic and abusive relationships, cleaning up my diet changing the way I think and perceive things and perspectives, having an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. Uh, the list goes on and on. They, yeah. they, if you want optimal health, you got to tackle every area, your spiritual life, your physical life, your mental and emotional life, your relationship, it's everything. Yeah. So that's sure. what my healing journey really consists of. And that's what the book consists of, is that healing journey. There's a part that I was reading. Uh, oh, dang it, where did it go? Hold on, it's at the beginning of 13. Oh, wait. Let me go back. One second. Hold on, Arab. Oh, here it is. So, <clears throat> because you said this at the beginning, um, because, I mean, there's a lot of people that do this, but you say, I struggled with my weight and food addiction most of my life. As far back as fifth grade. Um, what were ways for you to cope with stuff like that? What was that? What was the question? What was the ways for you to cope with stuff like that? With what? Do you... With the... Uh, the weight and food addiction because I I was an act, uh, opposite I was I was always like not wanting to eat mm -hmm. so I'm like I never been in that position so yeah. I'm like how do people cope with stuff like that so well there's coping and then there's or dealing with it I guess, yeah there's right. coping and then there then there's healing and freedom yeah, so you got right. different so I have one of the chapters mm -hmm. uh, chapter four is on addiction okay. And so we've got to go back to that because it doesn't matter if it's food, it doesn't True. matter if it's a substance, it doesn't matter if it's a drug, alcohol, uh, abusive relationship, uh, cigarettes, um, Very true. technology, addiction is addiction, gambling, no, no, no. it's all the same. It really is. It's just a different drug that, and we've all got uh, some kind of a weakness, I can tell you that. Oh yeah, I do. We all do. Yeah, and sure. the funniest thing, it cracks me up. It, um, you know, it, it's it's just it. An addiction is anything that just it takes over your life. Mm -hmm. It becomes something that you have to have in order to be happy to survive. So addicted on um, that chapter really. By the time I was in my early twenties, I was really mad at the world. Um, I had been mm -hmm. sexually abused until mm -hmm. I was twelve uh, by family members, strangers, um, including my own dad. 
Mm. And then, so at 13, I was out here running the streets, uh, started smoking cigarettes, hanging out with the bad boys. Always been around the bad boys since about 13. Mm. And so by 18, I was pregnant, 19, married, 20, divorced. Oh, wow. My stepmom hated me and caused a lot of turmoil in my life through my teenage years. So there was, by the time I'm 20, and I was, and that was a very abusive relationship with my first husband. Yeah. It was my high school sweetheart turned very abusive. Um, got married just because when we were pregnant, and I was like, so I mean, yeah. it's, Holland was a Christian town, right? right. And somebody <laughs> told me, well, you can't get an apartment if you're, you know, you know, having a baby out of wedlock. So I, right. you know, I gotta get a place for my baby. So I got married, but it only lasted a year and a half because it was just so abusive. And so by the time in my early 20s, I'm just, I am so mad at the world because I was like this happy, bubbly little girl and the world just screwed me over, you know, on every aspect, yeah. every level. It was just bad. And so I got introduced to marijuana. My next husband, who I was married to then 16 years, I, well, I found out everybody was smoking marijuana. <laughs> you know, and it's all kept it from me. But once I got my hands on it, it just right. became another addiction for me right. because that was my escape, my cope. So for five years, I was high every day mm. um, until that was another thing that, again, an addiction in that, in that chapter, how God delivered me. And the whole crazy thing about this book, because it says expose God's love revealed. I didn't write this because I was smart enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel because I was strong enough. I was just desperate and yeah. God had pity and mercy on me and he delivered me from a lot of things. And that's what's so cool about this story is it just, it does glorify God because he does care about each one of us yeah. okay. and he does have a plan for each one of us mm -hmm. and he's in the battle with us. Yeah. And we have to remember that even when it's dark and sometimes you go through seasons where you don't hear him. And when you read the Bible, like they went through stuff and it would cracks me up um, with, with, when I wrote this, I, I do a lot of um, scriptures in with my story. And I think of people like, oh, they hate the Bible because, you know, it's going to maybe put some rules on us or, you know, we, we just want, we don't want rules. We don't want religion. We, we just want to do what we want to do and get away with it. Right. So I get that, you know, and some mm -hmm. people, for whatever reason, they don't like to read the Bible, but my story is so crazy that I love the Bible because there was a bunch of crazy people y'all in that Bible that God oh. used. So I'm like, well, did you see what David did? Yeah. Did you see what Abraham did? You know, exactly. I had to use them because otherwise I'm looking crazy by myself. And I'm like, no, this this has been going on since the beginning of time. My struggles are the same as anybody else. Maybe a little different. They manifest differently, mm -hmm. but we still all have the same struggles and we still go through the same emotions and we still go through, you know, rejection and abandonment and hurt and pain and overcome because that's just like we're human. So mm -hmm. that's, it. you know, I just want to extend when you were talking about addiction too. I mean, I've heard. I, I, I'm around so many people and mm -hmm. I love everyone. I even, you know, love people that I've had really toxic relationship with. I just do. Yeah. God walked me through forgiveness was one of the That's number one things thing right to there. heal me. Yes. Yeah. One whole year of forgiveness. So we, 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 we went right after that. It was the yeah. first thing I had to go through to heal was forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a whole chapter on that. Well, it cracks me up when we talk about addiction and we, you know, like you said, we get kind of judgmental, right? We, mm -hmm. we easily, like, if we don't understand somebody else doing something, like, mm -hmm. we get judgmental. Absolutely. And I'm like, I, I'm around, you know, people like, you know, like, you could have a crackhead say, well, at least I don't do meth. And the meth head's like, oh, at least I don't do coke. Like, it's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> at least I'm, I'm only, a deck, I'm only a, an addict on the weekends. I don't do it every day. Like, they, exactly. they compare, we compare our addictions, like, my sin's not as big as that one, so it's okay. But you know, we all just, we're just all broken. We're all in need of a savior, and just just stay humble and stay kind because people are going through things. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I had my definitely in retrospect. I mean, I've I've had my. That's why I think of addictions. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was you know I I, I started smoking weed in ninth grade. First time ever getting high. I remember uh, a local a local dope boy had me uh, out here selling 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 rocks, mm -hmm. and for my birthday he gave me that bag of weed. He's like, man, I'm like, what do I do with this? He's like, sell it, smoke it. 
I'm like, okay, you know what? I want to be cool. Like, my cousins, all my friends, I was around all the thugs, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, so I, I'm one of the biggest smokers in the school in our clique. I didn't say his name. He's doing well now, business owner. <laughs> anyway, he, I was like, hey, I got this weed. He said, man, you ain't got no weed. I was like, I got some weed, bro. He said, let me see. We I was high by the red and white shop. I'm looking around. I'm like, pull it out. He was like, he said, where'd you get this? I'm like, I got it. Hey, man, you want to skip? He skipped. So he skipped school. He left. He got his girlfriend's car. And we went and got high, man. And, like, I remember everything looked like Tekken. Everybody was the game Tekken. I just came off. So I just remember everything I looked at. It was just like, Oh, like, God. it was oh. so stupid. And uh, I didn't look back. I was getting high all the way till I developed a tolerance to where it was like, you know, where I was like, you know what? I can have it. Now I can, I can smoke and, and go to work. I can smoke and, and go here and be functional. Live, live like a teen. You know what I'm saying? Just freshen up. Wash my nostrils out. Brush my teeth. Change my shirt. You know what I'm saying? I had a routine now. But then it was like. I wasn't even smoking to get high after a while. I was smoking just to get by. Mm -hmm. I, I, like that. I didn't even want to eat. You know what I'm saying? Until I was high. I was like, I'll make a whole hot meal, fry some fish, some mac and cheese, asparagus, I'll make a whole meal. And I'm like, so I'm missing. Oh, yeah, I didn't smoke. You know what I'm saying? So I got to go blow something. Now I'm ready to eat. You know what I'm saying? That just, and then it was just, I just it just came to a point where it was just like, this shit is controlling you, bro. And me trying to be out in the community and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, it's, I got to choose one. You know what I'm saying? And then God made me choose one. I got sick. What in the, I got pneumonia and COVID at the same time. It was like, yeah, sir, uh, <coughs> you got to stop smoking. And, or, or die, which one you want to do? I'm like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> you can keep the weed. You know what I'm saying? And it's been almost three years now. So, you know what I'm saying? So yes. um, it was. I didn't realize I was addicted. That was my point. Yes. Like I was just like I'm, everybody else. I like, oh, everybody else doing it, but shit, everybody else is addicted too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, it was time. Yeah, and they'll be like, sorry, they'll be mm -hmm. like, well, you can't, you can't get addicted to marijuana. I had no physical withdrawals. Yeah. But they'll say, they'll say, oh, I'm not addicted. I don't need it. Well, try taking it away and see how they trip. <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. they, that's how you know you have an addiction. Let, let's take your blinky away and see how you feel. In my circle, mm -hmm. yeah. from here to here. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I don't even, my homeboys don't even, they don't even call me no more. Yeah. Fishing trips, I don't go there no more with them, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm, it was, it, this was a big part of it. I didn't even realize that, like, not. I can't go fishing without smoking, but it's just like, you know, they're so used to that. It wouldn't mean I'm just like, you know, okay, well, yeah. I'll, I'll take that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we got a couple of people mentioning, we got Elias says she used to stock the machines when I worked at Bettler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Hi. good. laughs> yep, I used to, uh, actually when I, after I quit my job and lived out of my van for nine months, I had to get a job because it was going to hit winter. Oh, yeah. I, I had to get settled. So yeah. I got a couple of years of uh, stocking vending machines in Bentler. I love my people at Bentler. Like, I still run into people. I run into people from everywhere I've been around now, but <laughs> I cool. do. Um, she he also says she's such a nice person. Mm -hmm. And Miss Rios. Angie. Angie. Angie, probably. That's Angie. You already know it. That's she says, Angie. Go. She says, go girl. You go girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, lo I, do. I love Bettler. Uh, I love my people at Bettler. I miss them. So I was, I was browsing. And I learned you make a lot of friends with food. Oh, of course you do. I mean, oh, man. I had, the, I had the vending machines, so I just took care of them. Did you catch any of our Foodie Fridays episodes? No. Oh, man. Yeah, we got to we'll bring it back. back. We'll bring it back. <laughs> Uh, I noticed, so I'm browsing some of your chapters, yeah. and I like how you, I don't know if you do it on all of them, because I didn't really notice it like that, but maybe. should be pretty consistent. I'm pretty OCD. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I like how you put prayers at the end of each episode, or episode, uh, chapter. Thank you. That's pretty cool, actually. I like yeah, that. Yeah, this, so again, uh, God. I don't know why I showed you, like, you never looked at it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I tell people, it's a good book. I read it a few times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is pretty cool. I did. This was really a walk with God. I, I mean, just the whole thing was a 
process with God. And when I share my testimony, and this is going to glorify him in a way that because because people forget that God even exists. Like we're just mm -hmm. so busy in our, in our life. But um, you can't, you know, if people can believe this story and they believe what I've said, that this is my testimony, there's no doubt that there is a God yeah. and that he's real and that he cares and oh, that yeah. he's right here with us, you know. And, and I can still be cool, you know? You know, yeah. we can still be, we don't have to, you know, especially in this community, um, you know, it was really Dutch Reformed, and everybody looked like, you become a Christian, and all of a sudden you're going look, to look like you suck on a lemon. Like, you should be the happiest people in the world. Exactly. You got eternity to look forward to. You got, you're a friend with Jesus. Like, exactly. <laughs> why are you getting all cranky? Right. And I'm exactly. out here just having a great time and, you know, making a lot of people mad, just being me, and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That is very true because it's almost like you have to watch it. The old, uh, don't mow your grass on Sundays thing. I think I used, I did it anyway. Yeah. It was like, how are you going to tell me how to mow my grass? No. Yeah. But it sounds it's like, like the Pharisees. There's a lot of Pharisees. I can't do that. I can't. I can't. In fact, um, the, I had the pre-release book launch a few weeks ago. The, the book released May 14th. It's mm. now on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble. It's on Walmart.com. All of them. I have my website, seanmartin.org. Um, I also on Facebook, Sean Martin. So follow me. I've got everything linked together. You can read a few first few chapters for free on Amazon. Um, I have that link on my website. What did you say it was? Shauna um, seanmartin.org. And the reason I was saying that is because, like, the book was prophesied 13 years ago and then just now being fulfilled. But it was 20 years ago that God planted that ministry seed in me. Like, mm -hmm. I knew I was going to be someday in ministry. There it is. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Put that on screen. Um, so I knew that I had the ministry call before the book came. I didn't know how God was going to do it. Just God plants these little words of knowledge, these little seeds. And... Um, he just kind of takes time to develop them. And so a few days after the book launch, mm -hmm. um, I was having a conversation with God. You can keep it real. Like, I can ask God a question. I, for real, he will answer within minutes, hours, or days. Mm -hmm. Just try it. Seriously, mm -hmm. talk to God. Mm -hmm. he, he will show up in some crazy way. He has answered me on the craziest stuff. I have crazy stories in here that can test that I like. It was only God, you know. Ooh. There was no other way because I didn't say any, to anybody else, and yeah, I got the answer. Mm -hmm. And so a few days after the book launch, I was like, okay, God, I had this issue. Like, I didn't know what to do about church and with the churches around here and trying to find your place still. I'm, you know, trying to find that place and... And I've been in, involved in many different churches around here, so I have a lot of people mm. that I've, you know, gotten close to. Right. But um, all of a sudden, God downloaded all this church stuff, and it was it's time to launch my own ministry. So I'm going to start this Saturday, Sweet. 11 a.m. Uh, we will do. So it'll be Saturday church. So there, there you can mow the lawn back on Sunday now. There you go. You're free. <laughs> You're free to mow the lawn. See you Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I live in Park or Lake Town. Oh, yeah, that's that true. That apply to me. You're an alley, baby. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. And I have that information on, on uh, Facebook. I have a flyer up and stuff that's going around. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm like, oh, I thought we was just going to launch a book, but I guess God's ready. Oh, you launch launch and launch it. I'm launching, launch. launch, launch. launch, launch. <laughs> yeah. I'm launching, launch, launch. I, you know, for years, this stuff has been in here, so we'll see how it comes out, but. It's trying to come out swinging, baby. Yeah, coming out swinging. Out, yeah, out, yeah, out of all these chapters, um, man, there's some good stuff. Um, I remember, I got a, I got a preview of the book, y'all, aha. Uh -huh. Before it came out, she <laughs> emailed me. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm like, Shh, shh. I was choked up. I was like, damn, girl. All right. Uh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just love how, you know, at this point in your life, you just, you ain't no shame in your game. Like, you know what? This is what it is. Like, and that's the only way that you can get through to people, for people to feel you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just be, let it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. And I think that's healing for you as well. Mm -hmm. And anybody else is just, you know, to share that. Like, yeah. you know what, I've been through this. You know what I'm saying? The whole day. And that's one of my biggest things, yeah. problems is 
I hold in a lot of my aggression or pissed offness or whatever you call it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just spilling, and this shows people can tell what's wrong with you. No, nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No damn well. You know I might be a little bottled up about something. You know what I'm saying? But um, need to say what I was gonna ask you is out of all these chapters, is there one that you was like, you know, this chapter was the hardest one to write? Absolutely. Which one was that? Absolutely. I'm so gonna, I'm gonna look it up. You're gonna look it. It's actually the shortest chapter because it's that hard. Like I just went in and out. <laughs> I'm in and out. I got like three pages. I'm like that's all the printed. <laughs> like, I was I was done. Straight up. Um. So and it's crazy. And I'm glad you mentioned shame because as a childhood sexual abuse victim or abuse victim abuse mm. abuse and even mental health issues, you do that a lot of that alone. Mm. People don't know how to help you. You don't know how to help yourself. You don't know how to get out of things. Mm. You know, it's a very lonely place, and you do carry shame, and it wasn't until last year, that was my New Year's last year, I'm no longer carrying shame. Mm. I am no longer carrying shame. And so okay. that, that, that took 45 years just to get there. Mm. Mm-hmm. So this is why it takes so long for God to, you know, he, he, he makes sure, he takes care of us, makes sure we're ready. So the hardest chapter is chapter two, mm. and that's hated without a cause. Mm. And that was harder than my first chapter. The first chapter is a loss of innocence, and that was all the sexual, the childhood sexual mm-hmm. abuse. Um, and then hated without a cause was the the absolute hate I got from my stepmom. Mm-hmm. Uh, still don't know why to this day, but mm-hmm. it was a very dark place. Like they had like family parties, and I wouldn't get invited. I was the one that got bumped as a teenager. Um, they didn't want to make her mad, so. Mm-hmm. It was just a very, it was just so tormented for me. So it wasn't until last year that I could actually get through that chapter without going into a very dark place. Mm. Um, so I would get in and out too quick out of that because I would just, I would write really quick or read it really quick and bolt, you know, because mm. it would bring me to such a dark place. Like I would want to jump out a window. That's how. Mm traumatic that and that was my stepmom who hated me versus all the abuse and such like I don't know why that one was so hard for me mm-hmm. um but it was it was a very hard a hard thing and, and, and you know and everything else was 10 plus pages that one five yeah that one we just getting in and out just, just, she, I, she I, hates I, me on let's move on <laughs> 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 no, no I do write some detail it, it is it's hard you like you have you have a, a mom that loved you for a minute and then then turned and, and mm-hmm. I was just a you know kid so yeah. um I raised when I raised my stepchildren I um just raised them as my own I I, I couldn't imagine putting them through now how was the your your dad and her relationship. They divorced. So there was finally an ultimatum that mm-hmm. if if he either had to disown me or. Oh, or that was the abuse. basis of that. That was later on, yeah. Oh wow. That was later on. So. Jeez. He did choose me, I guess. So. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, Hell yeah. That's great. Yeah, he, um, I had something to say and I lost it. I'm sorry. There was something about. About that chapter. It was last year. That's what I was going to say. I had another huge testimony last year. Mm-hmm. Another mm-hmm. huge God moment. Let's give uh-huh. <laughs> this one was a biggie. So, like I said, the last three years were the most traumatic of mm-hmm. my life. And it's not in this book. At some point, this book was done. I wrote it in 2018. Mm-hmm. I already got the next book started. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, but last year, going through some, some pretty hard stuff, um, I was editing the book. I was already working with the publisher. With, it's published with TBN, Trinity Broadcast Network. And so I was going through the process of publishing. But I was still going through some pretty big stuff. And I was like, God, I need you to heal me. Like, I'm asking for another miracle. Like, I've had a ton of miracles, but I need another. I need another miracle. Like, you got he is, he's, got, he's God. He's God. He's got limited miracles, right? Of them. So I'm like, yeah. I need another. I need a miracle, yeah. right? I, this is just, I need you to heal me. That was my, I need that miracle. Like, I need you to heal the pain, mm-hmm. you know, in, in my heart that's going on. And that was a prayer. I said it on Thursday night. And I, I just prayed, God, I need you to heal me. I need, I need a huge miracle from you. Because I knew this was going to come out. And I, I, just, I didn't want to be carrying it or anything. Mm-hmm. Three days later, two days later, Saturday morning, I get a knock at my door. It's one of my cousins. She doesn't live in town. I didn't know she knew where I lived. 
And she knocks on my door, I answer, startled, because I'm like, hey, hey girl, what's up? You know, because mm -hmm. I, she didn't even call, like I didn't know she was coming. She knocks on my door, and I answer, and she's, um, she's like, God sent me. He said, uh, he sees you, he sees your pain, and he doesn't want you carrying it anymore. I broke down. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what happened. That's two days that's later. He, he, yeah, this is. That's cool and weird at the same time. It is cool and weird. You talk about secret. This is what's happened throughout my whole life. Yeah. This is all, so that's my testimony. So mm -hmm. we, we sit together for a minute, and I'm crying because I, I know what I just prayed, and she had no mm -hmm. idea. It was Thursday night when I prayed that he put me on her mind. Yeah. And she came to my door a yeah. couple days later. And you said she didn't know you. She didn't know where you lived. I didn't know she knew where I lived. Oh, okay. She lives okay. out of town. Like she just showed up at my door yeah. and said, "God sent me." Wow. And says he sees your pain and he doesn't want you carrying it anymore. And I just started crying because that was that's right straight from God right there. Like mm -hmm. he heard that prayer. And so I'm sitting with her, we're talking, and she had just come through, uh, she's big into prophecy and deliverance. Mm -hmm. and she, she, she grew up with uh, abuse within the church when just a little girl, so God's done some amazing things with her. She's out here tearing it up too, you know, for the kingdom. So cool. she, she's like, she had just gone through a deliverance conference, and she's like, I feel like there's probably some demonic oppression. You know, we want to talk about spirits, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, yeah, there's probably a few. I'm hanging around, you know, if you right. tormenting me or something. I got a few, I'm yeah. sure. A few open doors. And so we met on a couple of days later on a Monday. I went to her house. She has a cute little prayer room and, and whatnot. And she's like, you know, we're just going to, we're just going to pray and see what happens and call it out. Yeah. And I said, okay, uh, let's, let's do that. And, I, and I've been around this for decades. I have done Freedom in Christ sessions. I used to facilitate them, helping people kind of break off, again, the spiritual realm we have to look at every realm that's going on yeah. physical spiritual everything um so i'm we're sitting there and she's like well how deep do you like how big do you want to go like i, I don't know how big this can get i said you know what i said we're just going to do everything i said mm -hmm. just we're going to tackle this i said and this is what i said at the beginning of this little session i said i feel like god's going to do some open heart surgery that was what came out of my mouth an open heart surgery i felt mm -hmm. And so uh, we just sat there, we prayed, and we we're like, you know, any spirits, and they just started popping up, like seven at one time, we just casting them out, you know, we got authority in Jesus' name, they, and they, we was calling them out, they were showing, I could, I closed my eyes, I could see them in my vision, and they just kept coming, hmm. I thought I had a few, I swear it seemed like 50, I think there was 50, hmm. <laughs> there were like 50 of them, and we call them out by name, you know, it could be depression, it could be um unforgiveness you know those, those spirits are real and they they attach to us when we, when we oh, yeah. hang on to these these mm -hmm. things in our lives or they come in all different ways and um so we're gonna believe in god we're gonna believe in angels we gotta also believe that there's another there's a dark dark force too okay oh, yeah. um so all of a sudden uh, after some time and all these spirits like all of a sudden there was nothing it was gone and there was nothing else because they were popping up. We'd call them up and they'd, they'd, I'd say, there's another one. And I'd, I'd see them. And we were just, we'd cast them out. And then all of a sudden, finally, it was done. There was there was nothing. There was no more. I'm like, hmm. I, I think it's quiet. <laughs> it's quiet. There's nothing else here. And then all of a sudden, in the vision, in a vision I had, and I, I have visions, and um, they're, they're in the book. There was lots of visions in the book. Um, all of a sudden, in the vision, I saw my heart open like open heart surgery and like everything had come out hmm. and then all of a sudden these happen quick this is like a second a second a second all of a sudden i see my heart open next thing i know i see it stitch up by god's hand like i see my heart stitched up right hmm. we just open the heart now we gotta stitch it up right mm -hmm. second later i see a scar right you, you open it you got a wound you got a scar yeah, so mm -hmm. one second later scar was gone hmm. there was no scar i actually added to the book and i felt nothing I can talk about this now. I feel nothing, not even a scar. Mm. So when you look at the Bible and you look at Daniel, the little three amigos, right? They're throwing the fire. Mm -hmm. Jesus walking around with them. They eventually come out. They don't even smell like smoke. That's how God heals. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's, that's a great that's a good it's yeah. a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be open to it, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When people are so scared of God, yes, um, which is you should be, you should be God fearing. At the same time, you shouldn't be scared right. to go to Him if you're doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's the misconception is that you know, um, 
that, you know, you you have to be doing good mm -hmm. to approach God. I was like, no, he wants you to come to him when things are bad. Like, that's how, yeah. that's how he heals, you know. I mean, if everything is all good, then what is... What is adversity for? You know what I'm saying? Everything, there has to be, like you said, there's good, there's bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how we know, how we decipher the difference, you know? So I've come a long way myself with that. It's, it's so awesome. It's, it's, he knows us better than ourselves. That's what he loves us. That, mm -hmm. That's what exposed God's love revealed. When I started my healing journey at 27, I was still smoking weed every day. But I knew I needed God. I was doing this for quite a few years without him. I was just doing my own thing. And I wanted God back. But I couldn't break myself off of weed. I couldn't I couldn't stop smoking. I could I tried quitting for three years. I couldn't do it. <laughs> so you know what I did? I showed up with God with my weed. I sit in there hitting my pipe, read my Bible, smoke my joint, and go to church. Just show up. And he will meet you there. <laughs> and then he delivered me. Everything Come. that I've been healed from, he delivered me. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't strong enough. And there's still stuff, and he still delivered me. And I believe that he delivered me from all these things and healed me from all these things. He's got more for me. Oh, yeah. I haven't had depression mm -hmm. now since 2011. I've been anxiety-free for three years. Nice. You know, and I, I explain all these things in there, how I became free. Like, literally. Hmm the miracles mm -hmm. plus the applicable steps that I had to take yeah. how I had to face the fears and how I had you know how to combat depression and hopelessness yeah that's and good that's good I think it's so when you put weed or anything like you said addiction <clears throat> when you put it in front of God you know what I'm saying if you make it more of a priority than actually being spiritual with him you know God is a jealous God so like because I, I know I personally know preachers that that I mean, they, they smoke good weed. They use it. They believe in the whole cannabis flower effect. But I look at the works that they do in the community. They have their priorities straight. They're like, okay, what I do in my personal life, that's on me. That's my choice. You know what I'm saying? But right now, when I'm out here doing God's work, I'm doing, I'm doing God's work. And they get it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not everybody can do that. You know what I'm saying? It, it takes a lot. The balance was like for me, I could, I couldn't do both. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I, I had to choose. Like I say, the amount of God chose for me. He was like, oh no, I, man, I'm not letting you choose. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got to go with Malik, and I was just like. Okay. Do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, I know. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, yeah, and, and I, I, being, you know, this, you know, few decades in, uh, you know, walking with God for 40 years, I've been in the church my whole life. I've been on these streets my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I don't care if it's from the pulpit to the prison, God loves each one of us equally. Mm -hmm. And from the pulpit to the prison, everybody's just as broken. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's well true. Put. Well put, my lady. Like, that's a no, good, that good. been downloaded recently. I definitely <laughs> think your book needs to be seen. Um, yeah. um, I'm definitely going to push the agenda for it. Um, there's a few women I, I, I know oh, that could definitely benefit from this right here. They, yeah. like, definitely when I was just at this past weekend in Flint, like, <laughs> a few of my family members and their friends, I'm like, yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, life is real. real. Yeah. This thing is for real, you know what I'm saying? It's I have a heart for all people, but definitely ministry for women uh, coming out of the abuse and everything like that. And this is an easy read. It's not It's not a big thing. I got people, I, I'm, I have so many testimonies already flying in, and I put some up on the website. Mm. Um, I just saw a couple. One person hasn't read a book since high school, and she read it first night. Oh, wow. And I already a couple chapters. Yeah. And I got other people Dr. that Seuss. call me after the first chapter, like, I need a break, I need to take all this in, I need a cigarette. And I'm like, you can just take your time. We can work through this together. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Give me a call. Yeah, sometimes you got to process that. <laughs> They're like, process what? Information. You, yeah, you yeah. want to know the, the, the literally the, the last book that I remember ever checking out? Mostly we'll agreed. There was, no. Oh. It was a book in, at Longfellow. <laughs> When you open it up, you it had like it was split in half, and uh, 
you can change the way the view looks. Like, for example, I had a picture of New York City, but you can change the top part to a different picture. Oh, my God. But I was like, that's weird. So how does that even make sense? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the last book you read? Dude, I was barely in high school. I, I, uh, I checked out a book. Uh, well, it was only for class, but. No, I was hungry. <laughs> I know. Hungry, hungry hippos? Hungry, hungry, hungry. No, I, uh, that's, it's been a while, but yeah. Yes. But yeah, looking at your book, I mean, it's, I definitely, I think it's, a pretty good one. I, I like it. I like how you have prayers and the and the verses, because I I do. I or I use the app, the Bible app. Mm -hmm. uh, U verse, I think it's called. Version or something. Uh, I'm gonna look at it because it's gonna make me mad if I get it wrong. Yeah, there's good Bible apps. There's a lot of good Bible apps. It's called. I mean, nobody's gonna really uh, really understand the book. Of I don't know. It just says Bible. Bible. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you like people, y'all gotta get inside of this book and really get read the, get the details. Like, you know what I'm saying? She, and, she said a few things, but there's nothing like what's actually in it. Right, there. there's a lot. You, you don't, you don't want to miss it. There's way too much detail. You're just getting kind of a, a synopsis, but there's so much. And the first five chapters are hard, but I'm like, don't stop there. It gets better. Right. Then there's the healing. And, and it's going to show you just how to be set free in your own life so yeah definitely want to read the detail uh everybody's going to relate to something in here and it's funny for the last several years you know knowing this book um mm -hmm. i hear people talk all the time about a subject they're doing this they're struggling with this I'm like, i got a chapter on that i got a chapter on that you want to simplify your life and organize your home i got a chapter on that you want to chase your dreams i got a chapter on that. you want to live debt free i got a chapter on that i'm going to read that one <laughs> it's good. It's yeah. all about being set free. You know, we get, and I realized, Malik, you said people are scared of God, and it was just this week, and I'm like, people are either scared of God or they're mad at God. Mm -hmm. And well, he's the God. one that is trying to help us. Yeah. He's exactly. the one that died for us to save us. It's the it's the enemy that's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, yeah. That's his only purpose. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're just so thick-headed, man. I'm an Israelite. I'm just gonna keep wandering around in the wilderness, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> I can't. Yeah, yeah. I'm like how you said that because being like I was down in Flint this weekend, and um, we had a couple pastors that speak, spoke at this South Silas Bible Church. Um, they were talking about the Bible. They were talking about Bible. They were talking about the 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 Bible. They were all over his face, you know what I'm saying, everywhere. Just like, now, I seen him out when I first seen him, like, this, this is an interesting young fella right there. But I found he, he, he got he got pardoned for a murder. Mm -hmm. And so he spoke, and I heard him spoke, and he was like, man, it's hard for me to believe that God said, if God made man, he said, then why would he put us here? Like, how do y'all expect us to believe in God, and this is happening to us. <laughs> you know, he talked about the Flint water crisis, which is still going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The Flint water situation. While I'm down there, four people got murdered just the, that weekend I was down there. Oh my gosh. Four people. Hmm. Four people got killed in one weekend while I was in Flint. And it was just so sad how it was nothing to my Flint people. To people, it was like, it happened here in Holly, you'd be like, damn, who was it? Straight up, oh, it's that in like, oh, for real? Oh, okay, yeah, that's messed up. They're going to keep going, they're going to keep playing the PlayStation. Oh, Max Beef? Y'all know what it was. They, they, didn't even, they don't even ask who it was. They just wait to hear who it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, it was gut rich. I'm like, damn. You know, and I'm down there, I'm hearing gunshots. I'm like, damn, man, it's the opposite from Holly. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank you, Mom. Forget us about this thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it takes a deeper understanding of who, how the most high really works, you know? So you have to build that own relationship by yourself. You can't depend on pastor such and such. We can't even depend on you. We can't depend on, it's up to you to build your own relationship with, with the most high. And so, and when people get, get really figure that out, which is hard for these young kids to figure out because uh, Instagram and Facebook got them going. 
Our yes, so much they have trouble. This, this generation. Yeah. They have trouble. We thought we had trouble in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> oh, 70s. Yeah. Right. right. But, and it's... Pac 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 there's, a revival. Revival. there's a revival coming. I don't a know new, a new version, too. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I think, I don't, I don't think God's going to really just allow us to just, you know, how can I say, though? I, I, I don't know what you're going to do with it. I'm just saying. I hope you know who, you know, because I'm looking at, I'm looking at my eight-year-old. Yeah. He was just at my, at my play, play rehearsal. He's in a play I wrote. Mm -hmm. I just dropped him off at home, and I just, he got out the car and said, I love you, Dad. I said, I love you too, son. And I just smiled at him like this. And he was like, why are you, why are you looking at me like that? I, said, I just love you, man. Like, I could imagine him being subjected to anything worse, you know what I'm saying? But he is around. You know what I'm saying? So as parents, we just have to do our part. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I have a chapter on parenting and then teenagers. I had four teenagers for 10 years. You can survive that. You can survive anything. I have a whole chapter on that. <laughs> so anybody with teenagers or stepchildren, again, it's so relevant. Um, you didn't ask me what my favorite chapter was. I was coming. Oh. I'll ask Kevin. Oh, okay. Um, which one's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we set it all for that. Yeah. What? Okay. Well, then, yeah. Honestly, which one is your favorite chapter? My favorite chapter is second to last. Repent, Jesus is coming. If you believe my story, you believe my testimony, you believe that this is from God because it was prophesied and fulfilled. Mm. You know, I can't even. Yes. Okay, let's just do that. Go right from the. Repent, Jesus is coming. You know, we know him for two thousand years. He's coming back. Oh yeah, and so it's a fun chapter. It's a good chapter. You better be ready. If, you know, so the first first several chapters of the book is because you're just going to relate. You're mm. going to relate. Hopefully, you're going to gain some trust with who I am and what mm. God's done in my life. And by the time you get to Jesus, you're going to be like, oh, maybe maybe Jesus is real. <laughs> you yeah. know, maybe exactly. you know, and and people are going to turn to Him as their Savior. Yep. Exactly. And so that's that's just my favorite chapter because it. And then let your little light shine. Get out there. You know, you're going to get healed. You're going to get set free. Now go help other people do that same thing. That's a good one. So it's yeah. good. It's all God covered it. Yeah, I mean, he, he covered it all. And he covered a lot. Um, I can, I mean, I can big relevant things really quick. I mean, just not only did he um, heal me and set me free from the depression, anxiety, lots of different kinds of abuse, addiction. I'm talking <coughs> decades of um, homosexuality. Healing from abortion. So, any woman out there, please, God has healing for you, no matter what you've done or what's been done to you. Mm -hmm. okay? oh, it's in here. Yep. It's in here. Ooh. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. But but God ain't sh God ain't shocked. He ain't surprised. Yep. Yep. We've been God. doing this since, since Adam and Eve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That far. So, far back. He's a rescuer. So before we uh, before we end the show, I want to. Give you a chance to uh, let everybody know again where they can purchase this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in your website. Okay. So the website is shaunamartin.org. You can even Google Shauna Martin Ministries. It's going to pop right up. In there, you'll get some more, you know, basically what I shared to, tonight. Um, you'll see there's a testimonial page. There's a page on the book. Uh, you'll see the book cover. There'll be a purchase now. It brings you right to Amazon. And you can actually read a few chapters for free before you even purchase the book. Um, there's testimonials on there, what people are saying, um, getting great reviews. Um, I just want to help a lot of people with anything you're struggling with. If you need hope in any area of your life, um, yeah, you can go on Amazon, you can go on Walmart, you can go on Barnes & Noble. Um, the book's $18.99, that's set for you at TBN. If you're in the local Holland area, you want a signed copy, I have them on hand. Message me. You can message me through my website or on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook too. I I put uh, inspirational quotes up every single day, and I keep you know you're gonna see what's going on with me and what I'm doing in ministry because this is just the beginning. Cool. So follow me on Facebook and you know let's just make a difference out here. All right, love it. Thank you, Shana. Thank, Thank you for being here. We were talking about it for a minute. You know what I'm saying? You finally made it. We were able to pick up the pieces. Wait a minute for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that is, you know, the STEM Festival. I mean, two times. Um, you know. Everybody's going to be STEM Festival. So, um, that was horrible. I'm glad you, I'm glad you made it. Never on schedule, but always on time, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's how, the, that's how it works, you know. How many times I thought it was, oh, this is the time. Thank God it wasn't. <laughs> 
Right. You don't want to wait release you early. Lord. Yeah, you tell your parents if you want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell them if you want to. But yeah, um, it's been it's been awesome, man. Just, just yeah. being your friend and seeing your journey from my perspective, you know what I'm saying? I've only had the 2018 and now version of you. Yeah. And so all that before, man, just you being able to convey it into a book now is that's that's awesome, man. You know. You there? And you see, already working on number two, and um, mm-hmm. that's gonna be a big one. That's gonna be huge. That's so, no doubt. And when is that? Or are you still writing that one? I'm still writing. Okay, that cool. One. So we'll hear more from Shauna Martin as soon as her new book is released or about to be released, and when it's gonna be released. Yeah, a couple of years. Uh, a couple of years. So we, we got some time. Well, look at this. Well, let's right. get this yep. one out. Right. She's gotta get some more material. <laughs> right. I got all the material. Right. We got all the material. Yes, time. I got the material. Now okay, cool. see the time. And sorry, um, Bentler, but these probably won't be in the vending machine. Right. All right. <laughs> we get our own copies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I gotta buy. I gotta go get it from the real source. So. Yeah. Um, sure. I appreciate Thank you, you so much for letting me know. It's been real. And this episode was brought to you by Pure West Compassion Club, uh, located on Adam Street next to Lowe's, 616-772-9420, and Angela Zamudio's cleaning, or Zamudio Ramos Cleaning Service, I always mess that up, uh, 616-321-0309, owned by Angela Zamudio. You just wear shoes in the business. Right. <coughs> Excuse me, that took this. Allergy stuff is messing me up. But uh, we want to thank you for being on tonight and uh, yeah, good good luck and best wishes on everything. Thank you. We'll get the word out. Go buy this book at, uh, what did you say, Walmart? Online or you can get a, if you want to get a copy from me here, I'll sign it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, well, she got to get a picture of her sign. She going to do my wall thing? Yeah. All right. Well, we will see you guys on tomorrow, actually. So. Everybody have a good night. Peace.